Hey there, Aaron again, and this time I'm just going to go through a ton of stuff that you can do in OBS Studio. You can now make screenshots directly in OBS by right-clicking and clicking Screenshot. You can also do this in Studio Mode on either side, the Program side or the Preview side. After you click, just go to the directory that your videos are being recorded to. To check where that is, go to Settings, Output, Recording, and find that path. And there's a screenshot. You can add browser sources as docs in OBS in order to modify your UI. Go to View, Docs, and Custom Browser Docs. Give it a name, and then grab a URL of what you want to add. In this example, I'll actually add a Twitch stream. I'm going to go to the stream and click Settings, pop out Player, copy the URL, paste it in OBS, and click Apply. And now I can place this anywhere I want. I'll click close on the dock menu, grab the top, and drag it where I want it to go. You can resize it by using the dividers, and you can interact like you normally would. You can close it and re-add it later because it's already saved. View, Docs, and find the name that you gave it. Do you see this little noise here in my microphone when I'm not speaking? You can actually get rid of that by adding a filter. Click the cog, filters, click the plus, noise gate, OK, and close. Now the room noise is gone. You can actually tell Windows how to prioritize how much CPU it should dedicate to running OBS by clicking Settings, Advanced, and change the process priority from Normal as a default to Above Normal. You can add a Stats area to your Docs in OBS by going to View, Docs, Stats. It'll give you all kinds of information like CPU usage, whether or not you're dropping frames due to rendering lag, encoding lag, or network issues. You can color code your sources by right-clicking on a source, Set Color, and you can choose a preset color or even a custom color. And now the source has a color. OBS saves your scenes whenever you close it automatically, but you can also export your scenes just as a backup by going to Scene Collection and Export. If you need to restore one, you just use Import. You can also do the same for your settings in OBS using Profile. This saves the actual preferences in your Settings menu. If you're liking what you're learning so far, please consider hitting the Subscribe button and giving the video a like. OBS has a lot of really interesting transitions that you can use straight from the program without having to go out and buy some. First, you need the Scene Transition dock by going to View, Docs, Scene Transitions, and then from there, click the dropdown, and there's all kinds of options. One of the ones that we can take a look at is LumaWhite. Then click Image, and you'll find a lot of different options. Choose one, and click Preview Transition, and it'll show you what that looks like. One of my favorites is Sinus 9. Once you have one you like, click OK. And in Studio Mode, you can click the plus and Luma Wipe to add it as a quick transition button. If you're not in Studio Mode, just go to the Scene Transitions dock and make sure Luma Wipe is selected. Rather than clicking and dragging, you can use the Transform function in OBS to very quickly do some common sizing and placement things. For example, with the source selected, I can right-click, transform, and fit to screen. And now the image fits to the screen. Let's say I resize the image, and I want it absolutely centered. I can right-click it, transform, center to screen. That centers it horizontally and vertically. If I only wanted to center it vertically, I can right-click, transform, center vertically. That only centers it from top to bottom. You can also do that for left to right. Right click, transform, center horizontally. You also have rotate options, 90 degrees and 180 degrees, flip horizontal and flip vertical. And if you want to start over from the original size, use reset transform to send a preview of something, either the program or preview side, to another monitor. There are a number of ways to do this, but what I like to do is just right click and you can choose full screen projector and choose the display that you want full screen and hit escape to clear it. Or you can right click and use windowed projector, which gives you an actual window that you can resize and maximize. And you can do projectors for both the program side in studio mode and the preview side. You can also project scenes by right-clicking, 
and doing a projector. And even though the scene is not active, the projector still works. You can also make multi-view projectors that show multiple scenes by clicking View and Multi-View. OBS actually has visual themes by going to Settings and the General tab, changing the theme. If you have questions and you want priority access to comment replies on my channel, you can actually click the Join button and become a member, and then I'll reply to your comments first. When placing objects in your scene, if you don't like how it snaps to the edges, you can actually disable that by going to Settings, and in the first tab, unchecking the Enable box in the Source Alignment Snapping area. Click Apply and OK, and now your sources won't snap to edges. You can also fine-tune your placement by using the arrow keys on your keyboard to move one pixel at a time. Press and hold the arrow key to move it slowly. You can now edit text in a scene without having to double-click and open the properties of a text source. Simply select the text and edit it here in this little preview. You can also now see how much time is remaining in a video that's playing by going to the scene that it's in, clicking the media source, and now you have an area where you can see how much time is left on the video. You can also pause or stop the video or scrub to a new part. You can add simple color objects very quickly in a scene by going to Sources, Plus, and Color Source. Choose a color, or if you have a color on screen that you want, you can click Pick Screen Color, and then hover your mouse over the color you want, and click OK, and OK. And now you can resize it and place it as you normally would. You can actually make a video playlist inside OBS to play multiple videos. Click the plus and VLC video source. If you don't have this option, just go to videoland.org slash VLC and download it. You can choose to loop or shuffle the playlist and then add videos by clicking the plus. Click OK and when the scene is live, the video playlist will play. Check out my favorite plugins for OBS Studio by clicking this video here. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Welcome, and thanks for calling the r and Hawaii YouTube hotline. In a few words, tell us what you're calling about. You can say things like, my stream won't start, or how did you do that thing with your webcam? I'm sorry, I didn't get that.